The next scenario that we're going to talk about is going to be verifying if the first product and second product's manufacturer's address are same. So if we go to the application under test and if we just go to the seed data over here, you'll notice that for the first product that we have got, which is the keyboard, we can see that we have got the component as this and we have got manufacturers here. And the manufacturers are Foxconn and it has got addresses something like this. And if we just go to the second product, which is of the same product, which is the product one, and it has got the manufacturer something like this. But if you go back to the second product, which is the this one, the monitor cover, uh, the component, you can see that the manufacturer is still Foxconn, uh, but the address is the Germany and Italy over here. So that is the whole idea that we are going to be verifying over here. So basically the manufacturer has got the same address and the manufacturer is also pretty much exactly the same for both the product one as well as for the product two. And you'll also notice that for the first product, we have got three components, whereas for the second product, we have got only one component, but they also have got the same manufacturer and address. That is what we are going to be verifying. So that is the complex scenario that we're talking about over here. And we'll see how that we could able to achieve it. So if we go back to our advanced operation scenario over here, and the scenario that we're going to be writing it is going to be this. So we're going to say, verify product one and product two manufacturers address or same it looks quite straightforward right i mean it is not quite difficult as you would probably assume but the verification is going to be a bit tricky as i say so i'm going to say product one and product two over here and then i'm going to say and i should verify the product one and product two address or same so i'm just going to say create step and i'm going to create the basic operation over here and the verification is going to be something like this. I'm going to say the first response components because component has got the manufacturers and the manufacturer has got the addresses there. And because the components are basically a list of items. So if I just go to the definition of the components, you can see that it's a collection of components. So I need to do the first or default or whatever in the link to get the first component. So basically I'm going to verify for the first component there. And then I'm going to say manufacturers. And once again, manufacturer is also a collection under the components. So we got to get the first one as well. And then I'm going to say should dot addresses. So I'm going to take the addresses and I'm going to verify if the address should be equivalent to pretty much exactly the same thing like how we did before and i'm going to do the exact same thing over here as well but this time for the underscore second response and it's going to be the address as well right i'm going to take that and i'm going to write the options here so opt is equal to and the option so let me uh, do a bit of formatting here so that you can have a clear understanding. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to say var first address as this. Uh, and I'm going to say var second address is going to be this one. And I'm going to replace that to first address. And this is going to be the second address, something like this. So this is more readable than before. So let me put that over here and I'm going to say option and within this option, I'm going to uh, do a few more operation. But before I even do that, guess what? I'm going to just leave this option probably to nothing like this. I'm going to save this and let's go to our scenario over here and then try to execute this particular scenario. So, but in order to do that, we need to build this whole solution and which i'm going to stop our execution as well let me run the app i know it's a bit nagging every time you gotta be stopping the application and run it again because essentially they are running in the same solution uh, now if i just go and run the test you will notice that the test is going to fail and the reason why the test is failing is because you will notice that even though the address are pretty much exactly the same for both the products you'll notice that the address also has got a first address ID 
uh, which is the ID property, which is going to be unique for each and every table. So if you just go to the definition of the manufacturers over here, you'll notice that the address has got an ID and the ID is going to be always changing. It's not going to be same for each and every address. Guess what? I know it's a bit confusing because you have not seen the response coming through yet. I'm going to put a breakpoint for both the responses that is actually coming through and then we'll verify how they are actually looking. So I'm going to do a debug operation this time and I'll show you how the responses is going to look like and what difference does it make comparatively. So now that the first response has come through, so we'll see what is the product. So you see that this is the product is coming through and it has got a component. I think this component, the first component that we are verifying, it has got the manufacturers and the manufacturers is also a collection. It has got addresses there and there are two addresses there. And the first address has got this and it has got an ID of one. And you can see that this is the second address which has got an ID of two. But when we go to the second response, you will notice that it also has got various different component in there. But we're just verifying the first component. So go to the manufacturers and the address. And you'll notice that the ID is seven this time. So it is entirely different from the address that you are trying to verify. So now we need to exclude this address so that we could able to perform that operation. That is what I was talking about, guys. We have to do that. But how do we do it? Well, guess what? We can do that much, much easily in the rest sharp. And I'll tell you how that we could able to achieve it. So let the test to really fail there. Um, and I'm going to go and ignore the ID that we are actually looking at over here in the exception. So I'm going to say I'm gonna opt or the options and I'm going to say opt dot. And there is this method called as exclude. And I'm going to be excluding the ID of that particular address, which is going to be the address that is actually coming through. So you can see that if I just hover there, so this ID is basically from the address type. So that is what I'm really going to exclude this time. And now if I go back and run this particular test, you'll notice that the test is eventually going to pass. So this way you will notice that we could also verify even more complex responses. And also we can drill down what we are essentially going to verify and we can ensure that we are not really compromising with our test anywhere, but we can customize how the assertions can be performed by using the fluent assertion. And once again, the fluent assertion is something which is available in our crash course. So please go ahead and watch there. And that will give you more idea of how that you can use fluent assertion. But these are some of the complex fluent assertions that you can do with the complex response types.